In this video I'm going to be showing you the basic workflow, features and commands for sequencing drums on the Ableton Push 2. I'll cover both sequencing by real-time recording and also step sequencing. What is going on people? It's Low Heat. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. For this Push 2 sequencing video, I'm using the sample pack from Duke Westlake. A super dope producer that I found on Instagram and he was kind enough to send me his sample pack Rare Weapons Volume 1. I will link it down in the description of the video if you're interested in that so I'll be using the drum sounds from that pack. And also linked in the description are my own Ableton Live packs so make sure to check them out as well. Some of them are free so nothing to lose if you try them out. And now let's get right into the video. Okay so as I mentioned the first method is going to be the real-time recording. I've got a drum rack with the drums from the Duke West Lakes Rare Weapons Volume 1 sample pack. This sounds super heavy by the way. And so one thing I like to do is set my latency in Ableton to 64 samples so that, that I can record drums in real time as precise as possible. Okay, so first thing we need to do is set our fixed length. So fixed length means that the push to will loop our recording after a set number of bars. So we hold the fixed length button. I'll set it to two bars and it's not turned on if it's not blinking. So I will turn it on and now we're going to be recording two bars. Metronome switched on and let's record something. To so now that we have our kick and snare recorded, Let's see how quantization works. So we hold down the quantize button and we need to set the quantize amount. If we just press the quantize button, it will quantize everything 100%. So this will make it stick to the grid precisely. And we don't really want that. Actually, we want to preserve some of our own groove. Or at least that's what I prefer to do. So I hold the quantize button, set it to about 50%. Choose a quantization value, so this means that the notes will be snaps to the nearest 16th note. And that's the most popular value that people use most of the time. And of course, depending on the type of drums you're recording, you can choose another value as well. I'm going to be activating the swing to about 30, I don't know, 30 percent. So now we let go of the quantize button and it's still not quantized. This means that we've set our settings, but in order to quantize, we need to hit the quantize button once again and now it's quantized to 16th notes 46 percent let's hear how it sounds i'm gonna turn off the metronome and if you want to add notes it's pretty easy because it's always overdubbing so you don't need to activate the overdubbing option as we do in the arrangement view because we're in the session view now. Oh, this is the best way to use the push to in the session view. So let's just add one kick here at, in the beginning of bar two. So we have, uh, yeah. So let's just quantize the kicks now because this kick was kind of off rhythm. And if you want to quantize a certain sound you hold the quantize button and you hit the corresponding pad so we hit our kick and now we have only the kick quantized as we can hear this kick before the snare on the second bar is kind of too loud the velocity is too high so in order to fix the velocity we need to go to this layout where we see the actual step sequencer on the pads above the drum rack. So this is our kick that has too high of a velocity. So I hold this down and I just decrease the velocity from here. While I'm holding down this menu appears, which is the settings for each note. I can set the length, I can nudge it back and forth, change the velocity, or we have the probability. So we can lower the probability of that note even actually playing. So, but let's leave it at 100% for now. 
cool let's add some hi-hats so as you can see these two bars here are represented with these two pads so this is bar one this is bar, bar two just so you see how it works if i hit double loop it duplicates the actual pattern that's created in these two bars and we have four bars now so we can just set it to loop bars three and four or bars one and two and they're the same at this point so it doesn't really matter let me record some hi-hats gonna change the layout to the 16th level velocity layout so in this layout the part that i've selected for example the hi-hats is represented at 16 different velocity levels and again same as the swing this is a very classic mpc feature so this enables us to record varying velocities with a nicer control than actually playing it with this velocity because that can be a bit harder to do let's record the hi-hats now So now if I want to apply the quantization and swing only to the hi-hat, I just hold the quantize button, hit the hi-hat, and we're done. So how do we delete notes? By holding the delete button and hitting the corresponding pad. So maybe I want to record the kick and snare once again, I just hold delete, hit the kick, hit the snare, and these are deleted. Just be careful not to hit them once again while holding delete because if i do that boom my samples are actually now deleted from the pads so if we have notes recorded first thing the delete button does is delete the actual notes and if we hit the same pad once again it actually removes the sample from the drum rack so this is not really what i, what I want to do i'll hit undo i have my kick and snare back in the drum rack again let me record kick and snare once again quantize them as well again my settings including the swing and the quantization value are preserved so i don't need to set them once again i'm just holding the quantize button just to make sure and to show you that they are the same so i hold it and quantize the pads with the kick and the snare Let's layer this on top of the snare, it's a bit too loud though, let me go to the mixer settings, hit the drum, the drum track, scroll to the right and I need to find this weird sound and turn it, turn it down, let's record. I'm gonna go out of the 16th level layout so you can see the loop selector layout as you can see noted here the loop selector as i mentioned before shows you what bar you're on and how many bars you have in your sequence Another thing we can do is use the note repeat, activated by the repeat button. And the note repeat actually uses the swing settings, so it will be swung depending on how you've set your swing in the quantize menu. So yeah, the, the thing about swing in, 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 on the push tree is that you need to apply the quantization in order to have the swing working. It's not like in machine where you have it like an effect and you can use it like an effect using the Ableton interface with the groove pool but the push to doesn't use that it uses its own swing engine or whatever we can call that so yeah let's try to add something with the note repeat Okay, so this was nice. Let's go to the next 
scene and I'm on an empty slot now, so we can try the step sequencer. How does the step sequencer work? Well, these 32 paths up here, they represent the steps in your pattern. So if we have it set to 1 16th, which is basically the same buttons we use to set the note repeat values, we actually have two bars represented up here and each pad is a 16th note. So, first thing is the kick and we can just put the kick whenever we want in the beginning of each bar for example. So we're going to put the kick here and here. Okay, go to my snare. And now I've selected my snare and I can actually place the snares in the step sequencer. Let's add the hi-hats. I'm placing them in a kind of random fashion. So, like I said, if we want to apply swing, even if we set it with the dedicated swing button, we need to execute the quantize command. So, we hit quantize so that we have some swing on these drums. Cool, so let me change up the velocity on this hi-hat. So I just hold this one, decrease the velocity. I will set them one by one just to have a bit more variation. Or one thing that would be very interesting to do with the hi hats is just fill fill up all the slot and just set the probability to 50. Just decrease the probability of each one. So this means that it will not play every time. It will play sometimes. When is it gonna play? We don't know. It's random. And of course, the one that I recorded in real time sounds nicer because that it has a more groove, more feel to it. Let me just play a couple of more sounds from the Duke Westlake sample pack. Quantize them with the same settings as we did with the drums. Just press quantize and here we go. So thank you so much for watching the video guys, hope this tutorial was useful for you, drop a comment down below if you have any questions. Make sure to check out my Ableton Live Packs from the link down in the description of the video and see you in the next one.